here we go. So again, we're searching for images to put together in a collage inside of Photoshop, and we're going to use different filters. So uh, we want to find fruit, right? Uh, so if you're in Google, you got to make sure you do the same thing, right? In Google, when you're searching, when, when I'm searching in Google Images, right? You go to Google Images right here. You then, of course, have, we got fruit in there. And then um, once we do that, uh, go to Tools. Under Tools, we can go to Size. So if you want something that has good resolution, you can go to Size. So again, I went Fruit, Images, Fruit, Tools, Size. If you want things that have um, good resolution, I would go to Large, right? Large. Large here. And then Rights is here, just like in Flickr, right? Use Rights. And of course, we want... Uh, what do we want? We want for labeled for reuse with modifications. Does that mean I could use it? I guess so. There we go. And now we have some fruit. <sighs> this one's kind of ugly. What does she want us to do? Make a composition with the fruit? So fruit tool, animal, landscape. Um, I don't know. What kind of fruit do we want? How about a orange, right? There's a good one. How do I get this into Photoshop? Right click. Whoosh. I don't want to do that. Um, right click. Copy image. Right? Right click. Copy image. Okay. So let's go to Photoshop. It should be in your dock and the bottom there. Right? Um, what, what browser are you using? Flickr's a little bit different. Sorry, guys. Flickr's at the bottom. I can show you Flickr. If you're on Flickr and not in Google, sorry, I know I jumped at Flickr. I said Flickr and then I went to Google. If you're on Flickr and you're downloading pictures that you want to use, you click on the picture and then you don't right click on it here. There's a download button here in the bottom uh, right corner here. So you just click download photo. And you have to download it and then open it. And in Google, I can just copy from the web page and paste right into Photoshop. This one, if you're on Flickr, you got to hit the download button there. And you can download a large size, whatever. See, see a big one like this would be good, right? Oh, and you can say open with. There you go. Other. Say open with. And then you can open that in Photoshop. How about that? There you go. See, open with Photoshop. There we go. It's already in Photoshop. Wow. But before we uh, continue with that, we want to start with the f file size that she said, right? Remember it was 1200 by 1200? You remember that? How do we make a file size 12 by 1200 by 1200? So in Photoshop, to make the correct size, you go underneath File, New, File, New, and of course, inside here, you have any size you want to make. Um, we could type over here at 12, she went 1200, right? By 1200. Um, she didn't say resolution, did she? She just said 1200 by 1200 canvas size. So I don't know, let's make this 150 at least. And then she said RGB color. Is that what I said? Yeah, RGB mode is right here, right? RGB mode right there. So again, file new in Photoshop. And you can type in 1200 by 1200. I did 150. She didn't say resolution. You can have a white background if you want or transparent. It depends on what you want to do. I'm going to choose white for right now. And when I'm done, I'm going to hit create and it makes a nice big white. Oh, I thought I hit create. Hit create. You got a big square thing. And now I need to put all my pieces in there. Okay. Again, if you were using Google, you can actually copy from the website, and it's still in the clipboard, and the term clipboard means is when you copy something, it stores it in that invisible area called the clipboard, and if I want to paste it in here, I hit Command-V, and oh, oh my gosh, look at my piece of fruit, though. Look how big it is on that 1,200 by 1,200 piece of image. So what can we do? Well, we can scale it down. Probably the easiest way to scale it down is to use the actual scale option. And I use it dragging wise. There's actually a drag wise. So what I mean by that is I want to scale this fruit down so it's smaller. 
To do that, I can go underneath image, or edit, I'm sorry, um, transform scale. Image, transform, scale. And by doing that, what happens is you get these options that are at the top up here. See these options going across the top? This is position. I'm not going to worry about that. But this is width and height. And if I hit the lock in the middle there, see this lock that maintains the ratio so that the height and width are the same? See the little lock right here? If I lock that, then I put my cursor over top of either the H or the W. And notice how when I put my cursor over the H or W, my finger turns to a finger with arrows going in both directions. In doing so, what I can do is I can drag to the left, and it should shrink down. See how it's shrinking? Shrinking, 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 growing, shrinking, growing, shrinking, growing, shrinking. Okay, so that's an easy way to shrink things down. Again, uh, we'll demonstrate again where it's at. And when you're done shrinking, always go to the Move tool. Always go to the Move tool when you're done doing anything. Move tool, boom, and it's going to say, hey, do you want to apply this? I'm going to say, yes, yeah, so I'm going to apply that. Boom, it's done. Okay, I'll show you again. To scale things down inside of Photoshop, the easiest method that you can use without having to dra drag, grab the handles on the edge. I know you can grab these little handles if you show transform. It's, it's fine. And I, a lot of times the image is bigger than your visible area. Remember how the orange was much bigger than what I could see? So I couldn't grab the handles on the edge because it was really big. So what I could do, though, is go under Edit, Transform, Scale right there. This is what I did. Then I go up here, and notice you have a width and a height. I'm going to lock it. See the little lock right there? Boom. Then put your cursor over either the H or the W, and you click with the left mouse and drag, and you can then go like this. A lot of times I scale things in proportion because I need to scale things down that are the same, right? I work with a lot of icons. You see those products with all those little icons on there? I need to scale artwork down all to the same ratio. And so you can type numbers in there. I can type in 75% and grab another thing, 75%, grab another thing, 75%. That way you're scaling everything in the same size, right? So I, that's why I use this instead of eyeballing it. Does that make sense? So has it locked your Facebook on one of those, or you just put your cursor over it? You mean for the for the... For the when you're scaling, yeah, if it is locked. under there again, scale right there. Uh, I lock this and then I put my cursor either over the H or the W. See how the finger turns to arrows pointing in multiple directions? That's how I scale a lot. Let's grab an air piece. What do we have? We got fruit. Oh, she wanted to win. I lost my thing. Tell me what we were supposed to get. Tools. Oh boy, we need my tools. Jeez, let's go steal one of my tools. Here we go. Let's go to Google. Enough flicker. And I got more tools on Google. I was like, I'm going to Google this time. Let's type in stud finder. There we go. Stud finder. That's what my tool is there. Oh, there they are. Yeah, there's a tool. There's a tool. There's a tool. No, these are not mine. E evil, evil, evil. Uh, how about we type in zircon? That's the name. Zircon. Z-I-R-C-O-N. Zircon stud finder. There we go. There's more tools. How come I'm not getting any images? Oh, because it's labeled for reuse and modification. I guess I don't give the rights to people to steal my stuff. Okay, uh, let's get this one. Um, or this one. Or not that one. That's evil. Evil Amazon. Amazon is evil. Amazon. Um, this one's fine. I don't know. Let's see how big it is. There we go. That's not a very big image. That's a pretty crappy image. Never liked that one. Okay, I don't like any of these tools. How about we get a uh, wrench? Wrench? Is that how you spell wrench? R E N C H? Oh, W. Oof. Oh, it is. W R E N C H. How about we get a wrench? I remember my first teaching of Photoshop in New York when we were there, 1994. Photoshop 2.0. No layers. There weren't even layers then. I taught people to draw how to draw a wrench. Draw it. Using the pen tool. Okay, let's get this one. This one's this one looks nice. I'm gonna right click on there, copy image. I'm in again, I'm in Google Images. If you click on it, it'll give you the big version, right? Right click, copy image. I'm in Firefox browser. 
Let's go back to Photoshop and then paste, edit, paste. Boom. Okay, so that's cool. So you know you know about layers, right? Can you see the layers here? You guys all know about layers? If you don't know layers, so you can bring them up. If you know any of these windows, are all under windows. Windows, layers, window, layers. It should bring up your layers, window, layers. And remember, you can move your windows around. If they're jammed over here, like if let's say your layer is jammed over there, and you're like, ah, oh, it's all the way over there. You can click on it, and then if, it, if you want to pull it away, you just put your, put your cursor above there, and you can drag it around. See that? Okay, so we've got a wrench. What else do we need? She said landscape. What else? Oh, animal. There we go. Let's get a fuzzy something fuzzy. Fuzzy things are hard to do. Yeah, fuzzy things are hard. Let's do something easy. An animal. How about a lizard? Why Why don't you like fuzzy things? Well, time to, trying to get the background away from a fuzzy thing is hard if you've never tried masks and things like that. So let's do a lizard. L-I-Z-A-R-D. Lizard? Is that lizard? Lizard. Oh, there they are. Here we go. Let's get this one. It's a nice and big one. There he is. Whoosh. That's a cute one. I'm going to right click on there, copy image. Again, steal that one. Let's go back to Photoshop, paste, edit, paste. And again, it's too big. So what can I do? What should I do? Again, I'm going to go under image, or not image, I'm sorry, edit, transform, scale, lock it put my cursor over one of the things and start dragging. You can move it around too, it over there. Let's move it around so it fits in there. There we go. There we go. It doesn't matter. I don't know. I'll show you how to get rid of the background. I don't know. I'm trying to get easy ones. With the white background, it's easy, right? And then what, what was the last one? A landscape. I don't know. Let's find our favorite place. What's your favorite place? Texas desert. What's that? Disneyland. Disneyland. Well, I don't know. Las Vegas. No. I don't. I, I never liked Las Vegas or Disneyland. So sorry. Uh, I do like uh, 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 Mount Rainier. Anybody been to Mount Rainier? How about Lassen National Park? Who likes Lassen? Mount Lassen. How about do Mount Lassen? L A S S E N. Lassen. There it is. There we go. Let's get a lesson. Let's get a lesson. Ooh, this is where the the it blew up, huh? Ooh, there it is. Cool. Mm -hmm. I know this lick here. Whoosh. Okay, again, I'm gonna steal this one. I'm gonna right click, copy image, go back to Photoshop. Edit, paste, whoosh, that's pretty big. Um, I'm going to leave it big like that. I'm just going to use part of it. Let's leave it big. Okay. So we have all three different pieces of things. They're all kind of on top of each other. So get used to using layers and, and how to move things in layers. Of course, we can reorder things. I may put the landscape all the way at the bottom. Okay. And now you'll notice the lizard is taking up all the space. So let's get rid of the white part of the lizard. Very easy to do using some kind of selection option, whatever. Uh, I would probably use the magic wand. I know some of you like using the quick wand. I don't like the quick selection tool. I'm going to use the magic wand. When you're using the magic wand to select an area that you want to remove, remember there's something up here called contiguous right there. That allows it to select colors that are similar. So if I click on the white, uh-oh, that's not selecting enough, is it? Oh, I'm still on the mountain. Wrong layer. I gotta hit hit the lizard layer. There we go. Okay, so I select some of the white, but it's not all the white. Look at the look at the 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 dark white that's underneath the lizard. So if you're using a tool like the magic wand to select the white area to remove it. Uh, you can also use the shift key to select more. So notice it's there's this is not selected, but if I hold down the shift key, you'll notice there's a little plus that shows up next to your magic wand. Do you see that little plus? I can click on more. Ooh, there you go. Click on more. Click on more. Click on more. Ooh, look at that. Get around there. Click on more. 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 
more. There we go. Maybe a little bit more right here. Again, I'm using the shift key to give me a plus so I can select more. And then of course, once I have all the white parts selected, what can I do? I can hit delete, boom, it's gone. And then to to stop the marching ants, I, know, I don't know if you have known, but in some of the Photoshop books, they call this little selection with the lines going, they call that marching ants. To turn that off, you use command D, command D, boom, it's off. And of course, to move anything around, we use the move tool. So let's move the lizard down here towards the bottom. There he is. Okay. Okay, let's do the... Um, I'm going to turn the lizard off for now, and let's work with the wrench. Now, I d never use the magic wand that you just saw me do that. I know with the lizard it was great, but, you know, I work a lot with products. And you saw some of my products on the website. I use specific selection tools. I use the pen tool. Anybody? Who's used the illustrator? Who loves the pen tool? Everybody should love the pen tool. It's the most important tool ever. So, you know, if I was going to select this, I wouldn't use the magic wand. I would use the pen tool because it's going to be the most um, accurate. So here's how I would do this. The pen tool is this one right here. It just works like, just like the pen tool does in, inside of uh, Illustrator. And then you work for the pen tool by putting points down, right? You got anchor points and corner points. Anchor points when you click and drag, and corner points when you just click and let your mouse up. So let's start. I'm going to start with a kind of a flat area here like this. I'm going to click once, let my finger up. I'm going to click over here. I'm going to drag a little bit, let my finger up. And I'm going to click here, drag a little bit more. Ooh, that's not quite accurate there. I'm going to have to go and fix that a little bit, but whatever. And I can go over here and click and drag. Ooh, that's a little better. And I'm going to click and... Drag right there. Yeah, right there is good. Click and drag a little bit there. Click 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 there. There. I'm going to do this real quick. I've been doing this for, you know, almost 30 years. So, 1988, first time I started using the pen tool. So. I, I tend to use this because it's the most accurate. And I need my lines to be nice and smooth. The problem with the the um with the with the uh magic wand and those kind of selection tools is is the pixels around the edge are kind of rough. So you tend to get rough edges when you're using those. Where if you're using this tool, it'll give you nice and straight 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 here we go straight there you go so that's called the pen tool it makes what's called pass pass now of course it's not perfect so I'm going to zoom in a little bit command plus is zoom in and of course you can hold the space bar down to give you a hand and you can move it around see that uh, then I want to move these points so that they're more accurate. See, this is not very accurate here, so I'm going to use the Move tool. There's a Move tool right here for, for the pen tool, and I can click on the point, and I can move it. There we go. That's a little better. Oh, it moved everything. I didn't want to do that. I want to click just on this point right here. Why is it, why is it selecting all? What is it doing to me? Why is it doing this to me? I guess I need the white one. Oh, Direct Selection tool, the white one. The white selection tool. There we go. Then I can move, look at that, nice and accurate. Look at this, and I can move the curve, see that? See that? Yeah. So I use this tool pretty much every day. This tool I use every day, the tool that you're looking at, the pen tool. Look at, see how accurate that is? There's no way the magic wand's going to give you that much accuracy, you know? This is accurate down to the pick. Look at that. I'm going to move that there, move that there, move that there, and yeah, probably put a a curve in there. Look at that. Move that there. Look at this. Accurate. 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 Look at that. Accurate. Okay, I'm not going to go in no more. You get the idea. I use that. Now, what what, uh, what can I use with this pen tool or this path? Well, I can use it as a selection. I can make a selection out of it. So, to, to if you use the pen tool for, for doing things inside of Photoshop, you, you bring up paths with an S. Paths. Right here. P-A-T-H-S. And you'll notice, you can see, you kind of have a little outline here. And right there is your path. See it all right there? So to select it, 
there is a pop-up menu right here in the pass um, pop-up window and it's called make selection so I can make a selection and I can select my my uh, my uh, wrench so my wrench is selected of course I didn't get inside here I should have done that or in there but I don't worry about that right now but of course I have the wrench selected but I don't want the wrench selected what do I want I want the outside selected so I can hit the delete key and get rid of it so you need to inverse your selection which means select the opposite to inverse your selection, we go under select inverse, select inverse, it selects the opposite, and then let's hit delete. Oh, delete. No. Oh, I got the wrong layer. This one. Delete. There we go. Remember what key on the keyboard to deselect? Command D. Okay. So we got a wrench. We got that. Okay, let's go to the fruit. Okay, how about we do another selection tool? How about the magnetic lasso? Hence the word, and Sue's name's in that, isn't it? Lasso? Sue? I don't know, we'll see. The magnetic lasso is this one. If, if you count down on the left side, you got one, two, two down from the left side, hold the mouse down. You see there's a whole bunch of extra selection tools in there. I love this one, the polygon lasso. That's a good one, but the, for this one, I'm gonna use the magnetic lasso. Right here. So again, it's the third one in the list of, from the second one down here. Hold the mouse down, magnetic glass soup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the fruit nice and tight. Nice and tight. And the magnetic lasso will try and take it nice and to the T here. See that? See that? Look at that go. Look at that go. Magnetic lasso all the way back to the beginning. Whoosh! I select that pretty quick. Okay, now, of course, we don't want the fruit selected. What do we want? The white part. So what is? what do we got to do? Inverse the selection. To inverse the selection, we go under select inverse. And then what are we going to hit? Delete. There we go. Okay, and then to stop the marching ants and deselect, command D. Okay, move tool is to move things around. We can move our fruit in the corner there. Let's turn our wrench on. Oh, we want to change the size of the wrench. We can... We can cheat a little bit. We don't. We can hit that show transform right here. See this one says show. So if you got the move tool, always use the move tool. You're done with any of these tools, always go back to the move tool. Don't you know? Always have this one as your number one tool. So if you have the move tool selected, you go to show transform. You get your little squares around the outside, and I can shrink them down. Let's shrink that down. There we go. I'm gonna shrink it down a little bit. Oh, we can make a design out of that. We got a nice piece of fruit here. That, and then we got a lizard. There he is, and he's kind of running on top of there. There we go. So, again, if you got the move tool selected, go to show transform. You can scale it that way as well, and whoosh, you can do that as well, and whoosh, you can do that, whoosh, 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 whoosh. Okay, and then, of course, when you're done doing anything to an object like that, hit the, hit the move tool, and it'll ask you if you want to, you know, you want to, you want to apply? Sure. Okay, what happens if you go like this, and you're like, ah, oh, I didn't want to do that? And you want to go back to before you did that. Which key on the keyboard? Escape. Escape is your magic key. Look at that. Whoosh. Here we go again. I'm working in Photoshop and going along, and all of a sudden I go, ugh. And you go like, I just made a mistake. Which key on the keyboard? Escape. Oh, look. It's like the fixing key, huh? Command Z works as well. Yeah, Command Z. But don't forget the escape key is a very useful key. Okay, now let's get to the homework. I'm so sorry. I could sit here and talk to you. I could show you Photoshop for three days straight, probably. Literally. That's stopping 24 hours. You could be here eight hours. So we have that. Create a dock by 1200 by 12. We already got that, right? RGB mode. Create six instances of, of one object on your canvas. Six instances? That's not, I don't have enough space to do something like that. All the same size and align and distribute to fit the canvas. This means you would duplicate the same and destroy. Okay, well, let's try it. I'm going to have to zoom in for this one, I think. I'm going to turn the lizard off for now and the wrench. Let's just work with the fruit. I'm going to select my fruit again. i got my show transform. I'm going to shrink it down, shrink it down. If I'm going to fit six of these on there, I'm going to shrink it down. Remember, go back to the move tool, apply. 
Okay, so let's let's duplicate this. What's the magic key on a keyboard to duplicate? Alt. No. Well, yeah, it is Alt. Option. And it says Alt and Option. You're right. Here we go. Hold that down. Click. Oh! Ah, I hate the way that does that. I hate the mouse thing. Oh, look at that. Evil, 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 evil. Okay, here we go. So duplicate option. Click it. Oh, it's not going to let me do that, is it? Ugh. Okay, I'm going to have to turn the mouse thing off. It's that zoom thing is what it is. Why, why, why does Adobe do that? They like you know make these things that are so painful. How do I turn that off? Do you know how to turn that off? Where it kind of zooms when with your mouse. I'm going to turn the zooming with the mouse off. Zooming with the mouse off. Zooming with the mouse off. Why is there a Photoshop server with a password? Show toolbar property adjustments? No. Is there any way to turn it off? Does anybody know? Ugh. Here it is. Zoom resize windows. Well, maybe that's it. Zoom with scroll wheel? No. Animate zoom? Oosh. No. Let's definitely turn that off. Enable gestures. What's that? I don't know. Shift key for tool switch. Enable flick panning? I don't know what that is. Snap vector tool and transform the pixel grid. Show tip tools. So maybe that fixed it. I don't know. Again, I'm going to try this again. Option, click, and drag. There we go. Option, click, and drag. Uh-oh, it's still doing something crazy. How many? She wants six? I guess we're going to have to go down. Okay. Option, click, and drag? Yeah. I select an object. Hit the, hold the option key down with the left hand and then click with the left mouse and drag. Does it work for you? It might not work because I had to turn that, that stuff off. It was it was in the preferences. I was turning off something, wasn't I? Where was it? Under this. This Zoom crap over here. It was under Tools. Turn this off. I don't know if that worked or not. Okay, now she says try to apply filters. Okay, let me show you the filters I use. Let me zoom in. Okay, let me show you the filters that I use a lot. Um, here's one I do often. I do this pretty much every, almost every day, this one, where I put a drop shadow on my, 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 my object, whatever I have. So here's how I would do it. I take my object and um, I select it all. To select all is Command A on the keyboard and then drag it a little bit, selects it. There you go. So it's selected. See how it's selected? Then I fill that with black. Go under Edit, Fill, and I fill that with black. So the content says black. So Edit, Fill, fill that selection with black. Boom. It's filled. Then I'm going to deselect by hitting Command D. Then here comes the filter part. I blur it by going under Filter, Blur, and I use the one called Gaussian Blur. And the reason why I use Gaussian Blur is because you can adjust the amount of blur in the Gaussian Blur. So it's under Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. And you can see it already. See how it's blurring a little bit? See it blur, 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 like that? So I get a little bit of blur of the edge like that going, and I hit OK. And then I'll put my fruit over top of it. And I get myself a nice sort of drop shadow. You can see the drop shadow there. Here, let's turn off the land, the background, so you can see. See the drop shadow? Like that. And then you can always use the arrow keys on the keyboard to move. See how I'm, I'm clicking the arrow keys on the keyboard to move things around. So there, I, do, I often have a nice little drop shadow like that. Do you see that? That's how I do it. I'll do it one more time. I'll do it again. Let's do it with this one. How I make drop shadows. I select the object that I want by using Command A on the keyboard, and then wiggle it, just move it a little bit, it'll select it. I don't know how to do that in the, in the layer. I'm sure there's a way of doing that. Then I fill it with black by going under Edit, 
fill and I choose black as the option for the fill black right here is a black then I deselect by hitting command D then I blur it to blur it this is where the filter comes in filter blur and the blur I use is the Gaussian blur and then that and then you can adjust the amount of blur. See that? Woo! You can make it so blurry, you get all kinds of little stuff going there. So we blur it a little bit, blur it, and hit OK. It makes a nice drop shot. Then you grab your object, and oh, this one's underneath it. Uh oh, we got to move it above. Woo! Move it around there. There we go. There we go. It's a nice drop shadow. And if you're having problems moving things around, don't click use the mouse. Use the arrow keys on the keyboard. I'm using the arrow keys on the keyboard. And then you got yourself a nice drop shadow like that. Doesn't that stand out a little bit? Nice, cheap, easy way of making a drop shadow. I don't tend to use the effects one because the controls are not that good. Then, of course, I want to move these as a group, right? You want to move the drop shadow with the fruit. So how can I move the drop shadow with the fruit? Well, I could, in the layers window, I could put these in a group if you want. Select both of them and put them in a folder over here, right? You can put folders over here. But the problem with that is uh, that's kind of difficult because then you have to move layer here and group there, and that's kind of difficult too. Why don't you smoosh them together? Do you know how to smoosh things together? To smoosh it together, you, you do merge down. So I have the fruit here with the shadow here. Do you see that? Fruit here with the shadow here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to smoosh this one onto this one. I'm going to smoosh it. To smoosh it down, I select the one on top, right? The one on top. And I'm going to go, there's a pull down menu here under layers. See how here, layers? There's a pull down menu up here. If I click on that, there's one in this pull down menu. Woo, look at all these. You need to learn all of these. These are all very important. All these ones under here, grouping things and doing all that stuff. But the one I use is the one called merge down. See where it says merge down right there? Boom. And now they're together in the same layer. They're friends forever. So again, a good way is just to merge down one layer. It'll smoosh them together. Okay, let's talk about some other filters. Another filter that I really love to use is the one that tends to look like a um, kind of a flat art one. It's called the cutout. And I used to use the cutout a lot because um, I had a camera that was really low resolution camera. So it didn't really shoot at very high. But I wanted my, my photos to look like they were art art. So let's say, uh, let's bring the landscape in for this example. Okay, so we want to take this beautiful landscape here. And we want it to look like a kind of a, a kind of a flat drawing. And the one I like to use is called, um, it's called, uh, um, what did I just say? Cutout. So I'm going to use cutout. To use cutout, I'm going to go underneath filter. Filter gallery, and I'm going to go to the one that says cutout right there. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see it. So it gives you this kind of flat look. It kind of, it's kind of like, um, you know, it almost looks like Illustrator. In fact, what it, you know, this kind of works like the the, the Illustrator um, um, image trace option in Illustrator. See that? I kind of like this effect. And then you got some levels here where you can have more or less detail. They make it simply simplicity option there. I don't know. It's it's made it look like a Andy Warhol to me. I'm from Pittsburgh. Andy Warhol land, right? So it kind of gave me this sort of silk screen flat look. So I like that one. Of course, under all these artistic effects, you got all of them. You got your palette knife. You can make that look like a nice palette knife drawing. You got poster edges. In fact, you can combine them. A lot of times I would combine the poster edges and look down here. You know, you can't see. Let me move it up a little bit. But you can apply multiple ones to the same image. You'll notice down here in the lower right corner, there's one there. There's like an add a layer effect. You can add another one right there. Do you see that? Boom, I can add another one and I can apply the cutout. So I can have the poster edges. You can see the poster edges gives it an effect. Then apply the cutout. Notice there's an add here. You can add another effect. And then there's a whole bunch of them. You got your brush strokes. You got your distorts. Ooh, I like the glass one. That's pretty good. 
Um, the sketch, I use that. Uh, the one inside the sketch that I like to use is the halftone pattern. That's good for uh, making special effects. Let's do that on the wrench. How about that? But you see the cutout here. You see it cut out here and there. So, so you can play with all these. Get yourself a nice image and play with those. Okay, let's do the wrench. Okay, so let's duplicate the wrench. And then we'll apply a halftone pattern on part of the wrench. And, and, and how about we um, add a tint? A tint. So the wrench is all cool in that, but wouldn't it be cool if we actually added... Um, and, and, you know, you see this a lot in printed materials, the halftone dots. So let me get rid of this, the hole here. I want, I want to get rid of that hole. It's bothering me. Use a magic wand. Click in. Oosh. Make sure you have the wrench layer selected. There we go. Boom. Okay, that's better. Oh, let's get rid of this too. Boom. Okay. There we go. Okay, so here's the wrench. Here's the wrench. Um, let's duplicate the wrench. So we got two of them. Oof, I cannot take this. It's the, the way it scales with the mouse. This is, this is horrible. It could never work like that. I need to find a way to turn that off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tint the color of the wrench. Then I'm going to apply a filter to it, the halftone dots. And then I'm going to kind of combine it with the, the original one. Here we go. To tint it, I'm going to change. When I use the word tint, it means I'm going to change the color of it. To change the color of the wrench, I'm going to go under Image, Adjustment, Hue and Saturation. What that does is you can adjust the hue of your wrench and the saturation. is So saturation is the amount of color, and then you got lightness, and then you got hue. So let's change the color. It's not very good. There we go. We'll go with a really crazy... Red, red wrench, red rum, red rum, red rum. What movie is Red Rum from? Red rum. We did that in our class, didn't we? Okay, let's hit OK. Okay, now let's apply the halftone dots. So halftones just the you know the, the people are used to using halftone dots because it came from printing. When we would print things in the old days, we had to print with multiple colors, and we had to shift the, 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 the screens around, and it was just to... So I'm, I'm going to put the, the filter on there, and I'm going to go to the one... Ooh, what's this one? Um, where is it? Halftone. Halftone. Ooh, I, used, I like the speckle. Uh, ooh, crystallized. Uh, color halftone. There you go. How about that? That's the one. And then let's see. Do we... We don't... We don't have any options here. What is this doing? There we go. That's what I wanted. Color halftone. Didn't even need the tint. Where was that at? That was under filter. Uh, where was that? Um, pixelate color halftone. Now, this looks good and fun. You know, this is great and this is beautiful. But, you know, once you want to combine these together, so I'm going to take the wrench. Not that one, his cape here. And I take the wrench and put it right on top, like that. But now I want to use a blending mode. Have you learned blending mode yet? Okay. So good tool that you might want to use is something called a blending mode. The blending mode is in the layer window over here. And you see where it says normal. Normal means, of course, that it's normal. It's not doing anything. But if you click here, you can go, and there's a whole bunch of blending modes here. Look at that. It, can, it blends the top one, which has the halftone dots, with the bottom one. Darken, you got multiply, color burn, linear burn. <laughs> look at that, linear burn. Darken color, ooh, look at that effect. Lighten color, not very good. Screen, color dodge, dodge add, light, ooh, that one's kind of cool. Overlay. I use that one. Soft light, hard light, vivid, pin light. And then you can use a combination of the blending mode with the opacity next to it. There we go. Look at that. So, again, a cool way to do some artwork here is to apply an effect 
like we just did, the halftone, color halftone, to a second object and then put it over top of it and blend it like that. Again, it's called a blending mode. It's right here. Okay. And then, of course, if you want to mix these together, what was, how did I squish it down? Merge. Merge down, yes. So if you want to blend these together into one, you go over here and you can say, merge down. Boom. Okay, now they're all one. I love, I love this one, but I want another one. Another one. How about we do one and flip it? Let's let's duplicate this one, okay? And then I used to do a lot of patterns when I when, when I first started making art on the computer. I used to use lots of patterns, lots of patterns. So let's make a pattern out of the wrench. So I duplicated it. I got two wrenches going here, and I'm gonna flip it. So to flip it around, we can use the transform option and say reflect. So I'm gonna flip it. To flip it, I'm gonna go underneath edit. Transform, flip horizontal or vertical. We want vertical or horizontal? Vertical. Oh, there we go. I want it horizontal. Let me let me do it again. Edit, transform, flip horizontal. There we go. That's what I wanted. Isn't that a cool pattern? I got two of them now. Two of them. Okay, so we have two of them now. And then, of course, we can merge these together and duplicate them and make a pattern out of it. Okay, let's talk about a couple more. I only got a couple of minutes left. How long does this class go to? 1.30? What's that? Three? Three? I'm going to laugh. So it's like lecture one lab. Oh, okay. I was going to hopefully be going home to take a nap. Okay, let's do a couple more. Uh, let's bring back our fruit. Let's get rid of this. You go. Oh, no, we didn't do anything with the lizard. Oh, we got to do something with the lizard. Whoosh. Okay, let's do something with the lizard. Okay, for the lizard, let's see what kind of filters. Um, um, no, no, no. I use sharpen a lot, mostly for photos, though. Clouds are always good. Trees, flames, fibers, lens, no. Pixelate, no, I use that for special effects. Noise, I use to despeckle a lot. When a photo has a lot of noise in it, I despeckle, we'll get rid of that. You can add noise, dust and scratches, I mean, reduce noise, distort. Uh, I love the wave on text. Get your zigzag. It gives you zigzag. We can use that one. There we go. And of course, you can. There we go. So that's a zig. He looks like a dragon now and not a lizard. It's a year of the pig, though, isn't it? Not year of the dragon. Is there a year of the dragon in Chinese New Year? No. No, I didn't think so. It's the year of the monkey. No, there's not a year of the monkey. I think I was born in the year of the monkey. I think yeah, you could... monkey. I'm a definitely monkey. Yes, I am. Okay, so I mean, that's an interesting one. Zigzag. I do a lot of these these effects to to text, right? So let's do some text on there. I know she said don't use. She said use shapes, but I'm gonna use text. So let's put some text on there. Um, whoosh. What we got going on there? How big is this font? 800? Oh my lord. No. There we go. Whoosh. There we go. Okay, so we got some text. Text is uh, a little weird inside of Photoshop, right? Text is a little, little bit, you know, some things you can do with text and some things you can't do in, with text. 
and you have to convert it into an object or something like that. I don't know, she wanted me to show you smart objects. I don't know how to do that myself. I think she showed me somehow. Let's see. Filter gallery adapted. Liquify. Convert for smart filters. I don't know what this is doing. It's doing something. Well, there we go. Okay, let me start over. I had to try something first. I had to teach myself before I taught you. She showed me real quick before she left, and I didn't remember, but now I remember. Okay, she wanted me to cover uh, smart uh, filters. Smart filters? Smart filters? Or smart, smart something. Okay, so instead of, you notice how we applied the zigzag to the, uh, to the lizard, right? Well, notice how it changed the actual lizard itself, right? Your, your, your zigzag's on the lizard. But wouldn't it be nice if I applied effects to something without having to destroy that? Right? So that's where the smart filter comes in. All right, so let me put some text on there. Let me put some text on. Oh, why is it at 800%? That defaults to 800%? 800 points? What's one inch? 72, the last one on the list here. I never forget that. Oh, okay, let's put something in there. Let's put our name in there. Okay, here we go. So we have our name in there. Um, so here's how you use smart filters. To use smart filters, we go underneath filter, and you'll notice it says uh, convert for smart filters. You see that? It's the second option under filter. So I'm going to do that. It's just giving me a message saying something about enable, re-edit, smart filters, whatever. I don't know what that means, but hit OK. But notice you get a little icon in the layer over here with this little, there's like a little symbol right here. See the little symbol right there? That means that you now can go and apply different filters to it. Um, where are the filters? Well, of course, you can apply these filters, I guess. Um, some of them, not all of them. So let's try the wave. And uh, you can see the wave. Gives you a little thumbnail here. Hit OK. So you got this effect. Do you can see it? I gave a wave, but notice over here, there's a little box that says Smart Filter right there. Do you see that? And I can turn my filter off and on, off and on. And you can apply more. I like wave, but maybe I want, oh, what was the other one I like? How about the gallery ones? Let's try, can the gallery ones work? What was I like? Uh, what was the one underneath there? There was a glass. No, that's no good. We want the half tone. Oosh, not that one. Ooh, look at that one. That one, that one, that one. No, that one, that one, that one. No, that's no good. Where was the half tone? Ooh, there we go. That's not going to work. Where was the half tone? Oh, there it is, half tone. That doesn't do anything. The texture does. Cutout's not going to do anything. No, that's still. Ooh, that does something. Plastic wrap. There we go. Hit OK. Notice, plastic wrap, wave. Look at that. That make a nice kind of beach look there, right? You got your plastic wrap. It gives it kind of, you got the wave that makes it kind of look like it's paper or something, or plasticky. And then you got your gallery that gave it the kind of plastic look to it. That looks pretty good. I'm going to patent that one. Should, can I patent that one? Ooh, did you notice when I changed the size? It re, it took off my filters. Did you see that? Oh, and then I put it back on. Ooh. Look at that. I'm 
calling myself a lizard. Any question about that? Okay, let me do uh, just a few more talks about uh, text. Well, my last thing, let's put some more text on. Hungry. Let's put I like food on there, right? Who's ready for lunch? No, not ready for lunch. Okay, so uh, when you do things like this um, with text, again, the filter galleries here, you got all these wonderful things you can do to your stuff. Again, use the convert for smart filters to uh, make it, um, I guess, what we call um, uh, non destructive, right? Because you can turn them on and off. It's not destroying your, your original, right? So remember that. That was under here. And then um, um, down here, some good effects as well. See where it says FX over here in the lower, in the bottom here. Uh, some of the ones I might use would be a, a, a stroke, like inside of Illustrator, right? You can have a stroke. So I can have kind of lines going around my text like that. Uh, you also have a drop shadow, but I tend to use a drop shadow that is... Uh, drop shadow that I kind of make myself. There we go. There's a drop shadow. There's a drop shadow. Rotate it. There we go. And then, oh, don't forget inner glow. We can put an inner glow in there. You can change the color of the inner glow as well. Let's put some green in there. Whoosh. Where is it? Inner glow. Oh, that was a drop shadow I made green. Sorry. Inner glow. We want to make that. How about red? There we go. So there's an inner glow. So you can do all kinds of crazy effects with your letters. Look at that. That's some nice text. Gene might give me an A plus for that one. Probably not. Yeah. So you think you have enough knowledge of filters to uh, do something fun? I'm going to go buy paper and ink for the printer over there right now. Because we don't have no paper and ink. You guys want to print things out, right? Well, hopefully, 